Well, the story I was going to tell tonight is um, I kind of did a little bit of a trick. So uh, I asked, did you want Antarctica? Did you want cryptids? Did you want uh, government conspiracy? I got one with all of that stuff in it. So, uh, and I'm going to say right off the bat, not debunkable. Maybe not believable, but not debunkable. So there was a guy in the 1990s. He was a doctor. He was a lieutenant in the Navy. And he gets sent down to uh, McMur uh, McMurda base down in uh, Antarctica, um, which, um, you know, there's not a lot of people on Antarctica at any time. Usually, you know, I don't know, somewhere around 4,000 people or so at a time. So uh, it's not like there's just doctors everywhere. There's no hospitals, whatever. So he's sent down there uh, and he's the only doctor on the entire on the entire base. Um, so. Um, so he gets down there and things things are a, a little weird to him. He's going out uh, on this base is uh, soldiers and researchers and uh, and, you know, again, he's the doctor. So he's going out with researchers who are who have military guys with them once in a while, things like that. But they're not allowed to go to certain places. And he thought, all right, something's wrong with these places. But come to find out it's not there's nothing environmentally wrong or anything like that. They're just the forbidden zone. He doesn't know why. He could see out there while they're, they're driving that if they went right through there, the, it would be way quicker to get back to the base. But they're going like five miles doing triangles, five miles out of the way just, just to get around these forbidden zones. He could see that there's like a – while he was on one of his missions, uh, he could see that there's a huge building out there miles away because it's pretty – uh, you know, desolate and flat. You could see a long way. So you could see there's a huge building out there with a white, white uh, uh, roof. Um, but they're not allowed to go there. So anyway, he goes back to base and, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's on a tour. So it's, so it's months, months long. So um, while he's, while he's, uh, you know, out there, um, he says to the guys, hey, how come we're not allowed to, how come we're not allowed to go uh, out over here? And they're like, they don't want to talk about it. No one wants to talk about it. No one's friends. No one's being friendly. No, you know, so he knows, hey, something, something, something's up, you know. So shortly after, he's back at the base. And now all of a sudden, they bring in this soldier who's all ripped up inside. Like deep, deep cuts. And he's fixing them up, uh, you know, and he's like, hey, uh, what happened to this guy? And, uh, you know, because they got him under anesthesia, you know, the thing on his mouth. And um, they say, oh, he, he slipped on some rocks. And they're like. No way he slipped. And he's thinking, there's no way this guy slipped on some rocks. He has no rock debris inside of him. These are deep cuts. It looks like he got attacked by some kind of animal or something. So um, so the, so as the guy's coming out of the anesthesia, he stitches the guy up, whatever. Uh, and the guy's coming out of anesthesia, and he starts saying something. He's like, what, what is this guy saying? And he's saying, we thought they were dead. We woke them up. <laughs> and so the doctor's like, what what that guy's just saying? He goes, We let him loose. It was it was our fault. So now the soldier that's in the room goes starts saying, Shut up to the to to the uh guy on the table and goes and gags him. And the doctor's like, Yo, you're gonna kill this guy. He's got an oxygen mask on. You can't be sticking something in his mouth while he's you know, he's you know, whatever. So uh they realize what kind of situation it is and they put an M sixteen on the doctor and they order him back to his barracks. So now he gets out of there. He's not going to fight with the soldiers over it. He's worried that, you know, they're going to kill this guy just because he because he's talking. But he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's all he said. So now he has to stay in his barracks until they fly this guy off site. You know, I, hopefully, hopefully that's what what happened to the guy. Um, so, um, you know, he just had an M16 on, on his head. He knows something crazy going on you know he got sent to his room you know <laughs> it's 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 weird so uh the co of the base gets uh hears what happened and realizes that this guy's asking questions hey well, this guy didn't get you know hurt by rocks or whatever so uh the captain you know the commanding officer of, of the base and he tells the guy look you're too smart for your own good we don't need guys like you the last doctor was too smart He's like, ah, what does that mean? The last doctor is too smart. So he knows he's got to shut up right now. You know, he's he's dealing with, uh, you know, a, a real tough guy, uh, uh, commanding officer. And, you know, he's a lieutenant. He's 
can't he can't you know uh you know go above uh his rank so you know so again that's what what the captain uh says to him so he's like i gotta figure out what's going on here you know so he's trying to buddy up with all the like the grunts and the the researchers but no one's having it no one will tell him anything so he's like I'm going to do my own investigation. Now, he was smart. He, while, you know, he's going to Antarctica. So he doesn't bring, you can't bring many stuff. It's like Survivor. What kind of stuff you bring? So he was smart enough to bring an Apple 2SI. Now, if you're into computers, you know, we're going way back here. That thing's not even on, there's no internet down there for the, for the Apple 2SI. The reason he brought it is he's playing flight simulator on it. That's his like pastime. You know, he's got, you know, nothing to do down there. Uh, I don't know if you remember seeing the original flight simulator, how pixelated it was and things like that. But it was a fun game. It was one of the things, even though it was a game, it was very realistic. So anyway, he has this Apple uh, 2SI there. So he started t- taking notes and, and things like that on the Apple 2SI. So that comes back into the story a little later. This guy's got gathering uh, so, some evidence, you know. So, um, so he gets sent out on a collection run with one of these researchers. And, uh, and they're collecting samples. Like he's the doctor. He's not doing anything. The research is out there doing, doing, uh, doing stuff. And all of a sudden the storm car stop is coming in. He's like, all right, we got to pack up and get out of here. We can't get caught in the storm. And so they pack up and they get in the truck and they're driving back. And all of a sudden, boom, they hit something. He's like, what was that? So they get out. So they get out of. You know, <laughs> they think they hit a person. It's not like there's deer running around up there. There's not really many penguins. Uh, you know, inland. You know, it's not like there should be anything. It's pretty much desolate. So they get out, and he knows he hit hit something. So he's on one side of the truck. The the other guys on on the other side of the truck, um, and uh, and all of a sudden the researcher is like. It's nothing. Get back in the get back in the truck. Get back in the truck. And he's, he's like, uh, okay. But he could see from under the truck these long, spindly legs, like seven foot foot long. So it's like, <laughs> you know, what is what is that? Human looking? Not human looking. They looked like uh, the legs from the um, from the the creature in Cloverfield is how it was described. So long, uh, dwindly legs. Maybe you could, uh, get up a picture of of, uh, of that. So, so he so now he goes back to base. The guy won't talk about it. The researcher won't talk about it. He goes, you know, white when, when he sees this thing, you know, um, and he's like, uh, you know, I gotta now. I I really gotta find out about these things. What what's going on? So he befriends one of these uh, grunts who's like tough guy, Green Beret, but sort of, uh, uh, I don't want to say simple-minded, but maybe on the autism spectrum a little bit. And he has this conscience and feels bad about what uh, what's going on. So this the medical doctor is also trained in psychology. So, so this grunt guy um, starts faking injuries and it's sicknesses so he could go talk to the doctor. And in these sessions, he's telling the doctor what's going on. This is what's out there. They're typically about the size of Great Danes and they're huge spider-like creatures with six to seven foot uh, long legs. Now, that's what they sort of look like. <laughs> so so I sent you this, this, which is the guy from the Dark Crystal. That's what it reminded me of when you, I was hearing the story. So typically these things are about Great Dane size, but they, they grow really fast. So, uh, but he, that's all he knows. They're, they're about Great Dane size. He doesn't know, not, know much else. So, uh, so now again, some time's going on and now they're bringing people in who are dying and he has to, and, and so like they bring in uh, and they're telling him, hey, just say they died of hypothermia, died of hypothermia, died of hypothermia. So that's what he's writing down. He doesn't want to get in trouble. He doesn't want whatever, but they're all cut up. And now a guy comes in who's ripped apart. No no legs, guts hanging out of the bottom, but he's frozen solid. He's a big chunk. They can't do anything about it. So they got to thaw him out. When they thaw the guy out, they say to the doctor, you need to make this guy look like he died of hypothermia before we send him back to the family. Because, you know, I don't know. I guess they think they're going to have an open casket with half a guy. So... 
so so now he's like, you know, again, he's keeping his notes. He's doing everything he can because he knows this is, you know, what this is crazy. What, what What's going on here? So, again, they saw out the guy. He stitches them up as best as possible um, and uh, and uh, se- sends them off. So uh, so now he's like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm oh, uh, and that wasn't a military guy. That was a researcher. So one or I think I could be getting it wrong. Another researcher comes in dead, uh, maybe a different guy. And he finds a journal in the pocket of a researcher in the journal. It describes these things again that uh they're spider they look like spiders uh you know arachnids uh they got these long spindly legs uh it looks like they got five legs but i think it's four legs and one like thing that could attack people so um and not only that but they uh grow to to uh 30 to 40 feet tall that's how big they could get so uh um which also comes into play a little later the reason we even know about this is because there's a picture of them out there and it's on Google Earth, so uh, so that that uh, is is how the whole thing started. I'll tell you about that in a second. So so anyway, he finds this journal. In the journal, it describes all these sorts of creatures. Besides besides just the, this thing, they're calling this thing a strider because it's not exactly a spider, but it looks uh, you know somewhat like like a spider. So they're calling them uh, striders. So now he has the journal, and and he has this guy <laughs> Jones who's telling him all the stories. You know, but now he's, he's like Snoop, he's like, you know, he's like really snooping around now. Um, so, uh, so now he's like, you know, normally I wouldn't, uh, condone this, but he's ready, ready to do whatever he has to do to figure, figure, to figure this out. So he starts breaking into everyone's office and he breaks into his commanding officer's, uh, um, uh, office, you know, I, I, I don't know. He's, uh, you know. Antarctic Ocean's Eleven here, and uh, he breaks in. He gets all all of these uh, documents, and he's like taking pictures of, of them. He has some some Polaroids, things like that. And the documents are talking about how they need extra supplies and ammo and a ton of ammo. And there's no reason you'd need ammo during the cold months there because there's nothing up there. What are you shooting? There's not even polar bears where where they are. So there's nothing to shoot, and people are still coming in, you know, rip, ripped apart. Um, so he's taking, taking these pictures, whatever he gets caught, he gets caught. They got, they take all the pictures they, they and they lock, lock them, lock them down. Now his tour is almost over. So he has two weeks left to stay in lockdown. And, uh, but he, you know, he has all this info. They don't know it's on a two, uh, they don't know it's on the computer. Cause we're back in the, the early in, in the nineties. They, no one, you know, it's not even it would be easy to hide something, you know, if you're not even on the internet or anything like that, especially if they think it's a, a video game, who knows what they thought, thought was going on uh, back then with his uh, Apple. So, so now this guy Jones comes to him and tells him this story. And he says, look, I know it's crazy. We told you about, I told you about these striders, you know, they, they grow up to 40 feet long. Their, their stride is 40 feet. The footprints are 40 feet away from each other. They're, you know, wrecking everyone. Um, but he says, I got to tell, tell you what happened. So Jones, I think his name was Cam Jones. Cam Jones says to the doctor, look, we just got called out and we had to go southwest. So now the doctor knows, oh, they had to go to the forbidden zone. You don't want to get called out to the forbidden zone. And they get in this thing called the the car, I think it's called, which is like a military thing with, with a huge uh, gun turret on it, you know, really heavy military support. So him and his team, which is a large military team, go out there. So they get out there and it is carnage out at that building I told you about that he's seen. People are ripped apart. <laughs> it's like, you know, saving Private Ryan on the beach times 100. So, uh, so they get inside there and all of a sudden they see one of these striders and it is eating a, a person. So, uh, so, uh, they, and they didn't realize it at first. So as soon as they get up to it, that strider turns around and wrecks one of these military guys, just kills them on the spot. So now they have to have this military fight with this thing. Um, finally they, they, they kill this thing. And again, bodies laying everywhere. Now they were able to like, kill it. They were able to kill this thing. So now they have to go into the base. Uh, well, they think it's an off. It looks like an office building on top, but there's a sub basement which is 
not even a sub basement. It's an entrance to a huge military, to a mil like almost a medical facility. Um, so down in the medical facility, they go down there. It, they, there are, these things are loose down there. Uh, and so it takes 18 hours to clear the whole facility. But what they found down in the facility is even crazier than the striders themselves. So get ready for this. So number one, there's like a whole bunch of technology down there that they don't recognize. But one of the things he does recognize is there is like bullet trains down there, which, you know, could be run with magnets. He wasn't sure if it was magnets or what. And each one of these places is listed that it could get to all these major cities, New York, Paris, you know, uh, the major cities all around, around the world, a lot going to China. Uh, and also, by the way, the names in this facility weren't American. It was all sorts of different names on, you know, on the doors that he noticed. So uh, he didn't feel like this was any government's facility. He felt like it was a, a shared facility of different governments or above a government. He wasn't sure. Like an Again, unknown language? Uh, not an unknown language, but it wasn't just like the names were Smith and Davis or whatever. It was all sorts of last names uh, on there. So so he didn't feel like it was one type. It wasn't one government's place. He felt like it was multiple governments or multiple nationalities down there. Again, he was speculating that it could be above the government. Um, so because, again, there's technology down there. Where are these bullet trains going? What do they got these bullet trains for? Whatever. Now, also down there, they find all these tubes with what's some striders. What's this crazy watchdog you got up there? Uh, say again? The strider. Oh, good. well, they, they, they cleared out the striders. They cleared, they killed, killed all the striders now uh, in, in this facility right, right now. So, uh, and there was multiple. Um, but again, these were like the size of the Great Dane Striders, which is typically what they get to, although they could grow really big. Um, so they have some of these Striders in like glass tubes, you know, like, uh, what they had Luke Skywalker in, uh, you know, in, uh, Return of the Jedi, um, or, uh, no, what, it was in, uh, uh, Empire. Um, so they're like in these liquid containers. However, some of them are broken open. So they know that's how these guys got out and, you know, we're killing everyone so they could see that some of them broken. However, there's one that's in a cage and in the cage are multiple skeletons. Now here's the worst part about it. Those skeletons are children's skeletons. So they're feeding these striders children. So what Jones is saying is he thinks now, not no evidence here. This is just Jones's thoughts. He thinks that, People, kids are getting kidnapped all around the world. They're getting shot through the bullet train, uh, uh, um, you know, down to Antarctica, being fed to these striders. I don't know why, what, you know, what, what, for, for what reason. So, uh, so again, in, uh, uh, so he tells them this, this whole story, which is unbelievable. The doctor's like, uh, all right, it's, this is crazy. I've seen some stuff, but I, I don't know, you know, I, I, you know, what do I know? And so, um, so again, he's on his way out now. Uh, he's not even allowed out of out of his out of his barracks or whatever. So the last day before he leaves, Jones comes in and wakes him up in the morning, like way in the morning. And he's like, "Oh, it's too early. Come, come see me later." And he goes and, and he like puts his hand over his mouth and drops something on his chest. He drops a two foot piece of the leg of one of these things. So. Now, you know, just to prove it a little more to the doctor or whatever. So now the doctor gets shipped home and he had all this evidence or whatever, but he got court martialed. He didn't want to say anything or whatever, but he has this, he has a kid and tells his kid all about the stories as the kid is growing up. So the kid now sees is on Reddit or 4chan or who knows, one of these uh, crazy sites and they're doing Google searches on google earth of weird stuff that that uh they found on google earth now i don't know if you could pull them up because i texted it to you and jen right now so i don't know if they could be pulled up on here but i texted you two pictures one is a picture of the strider well ho well, ho uh, hold on <laughs> jen can you, can you yeah maybe oh yeah there's the 
There's the image. Oh, there's the image. All right, I got to get these images in there. So that's now that, that that's a zoomed in Im image um, uh, from Google Earth. So what so happened? I know, was I know it looks like it's out of out of focus to you guys, but that's how the image is. It's out of focus. Right. So that gets put on there. Hey, what is this? So that gets you know has nothing to do with the doctor what's or anything the, like that. What's the other photo? I'll get to that in one second. Okay. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so again, this kid is just on, on, you know, 2021 now, now, now we're up to, we're in just, you know, COVID times here. Uh, this happened, this, uh, this, uh, was posted February, uh, 2021, um, Valentine's day. Uh, so, uh, uh, so all that's picked is posted is that picture and this, and the doctor's son gets on and goes, I know what this is because my father was this doctor, and now he he tells the whole story of his father, who 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 uh you know dealt with with these things. He goes, I know what these things are, and he tells tells the, the whole story. Now, no one believes him online. Now, it wasn't like this was a cryptid uh uh thing or anything like that uh, uh forum. It was just hey, crazy things found on Google Earth. So. People are going. This isn't real. Whatever you got, no proof. Uh, you can't. You can't prove any of this. And you, and but it's all happening in real time on on the forum. It's not like this is going on over weeks or whatever. So the guy goes, "Oh, I can prove it. What? How, here's how I can prove it. I'm not going to tell you his name, and I'm going to black it out. But I got a plaque that they gave my dad. Well, that while he was in Antarctica, you guys could look look it up. I got a clock that they gave to him for uh, his time served there. Um, and I got uh, and and. Uh, so anyway, he puts those up, which uh, I think is the other picture Jen was just holding up there. So there's there's the picture of the clock and the plaque, and those you know uh, you know are easily to verify that those are actual you know patches or or whatever. Uh, but it definitely shows that that he had something, you know. And he said, "Please do a Google search. You'll see that uh, you, reverse search. You'll see these are my pictures. I just took this picture." You know, you're going to you're not going to be able to find that uh, that this is pulled off the Internet again, because it's only 2021. It's not like people didn't know how to do a Google reverse search by then. And then he goes, not only that, but my dad still has that computer. So he goes in and he grabs it and he was like, uh, give me some time. And he goes and he finds the actual computer. Um, so now he has the computer and uh, and he's like, here, I, I want to get the data off this computer. But. I can't find the keyboard, you know, it's, you know, the, uh, an Apple II sitting in his uh, garage uh, for, for 40 years here. So, um, uh, so now he's telling people, look, I'll do everything I can. I'll get you the information. You know, I'm going to have to enlist some professional help to get this stuff off this, these hard drives, but you know, I'll get, the, I'll get the information for you. So he's cooperating. He's saying, I want this story out there, you know? Um, and, uh, and then unfortunately, that was his last post. So, uh, did he, did uh, someone come and shut him up? We don't know, but we do know a few things that I think are, are, um, very well, well done if it's a hoax, uh, because how do you, uh, you know, in, in real time, how do you pull up, uh, those plaques, you know, and again, could he, he have, uh, just pull those off the internet really quickly? Well, he says, do a reverse Google search. We, everyone knows how to do that. So, you know, uh, so it gives lends some credibility, uh, to it, you know? Um, so again, uh, we, we got government cover up, we got cryptids, we got Antarctica, we got it all. Now that's not the only cryptid that's in Antarctica. I mean, also, uh, the Russians have, uh, you know, had an underwater cryptid, uh, called U 46, I think that's down there. Wait, we'll get into that another time. Into a new story. I'm just trying to say there's a lot more going on in Anta Antarctica. No new that's, story. This just that's this not the, <laughs> you, you, I just want to give you a teaser that there's more going on in Antarctica than we know about. And even though you hate cryptids, there are there are uh, um, cryptids that we can't find, like Bigfoot and Jersey Devil. But when there's a cryptid that's somewhere where we don't have a lot of people. Who's to say that that isn't a natural being down there? You know, who's to say we didn't have an apex predator frozen in the ice that could get unfrozen? You know, uh, you know, I'm just saying. Stranger things have happened. All right.
there he goes. Story time with Gino. That was a crazy one. You asked for it. Yeah. Loved it. <laughs>